Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. So, the last time I've shown you this, using a multi-tool saw for distressing fabrics. Now, this is still a great tool. However, after posting my video, uh, Chris from Red Roach Gear has commented under the video, hey, uh, why don't you try this tool? And this tool is a shoe roughing brush or a rough shoe brush or a leather roughing brush. And we also do have a piece of leather here to try out. Um, so it has many names, but in the end it's used for roughing up leather and especially roughing up leather on the soles of dancing shoes. So um, this tool exists since, for, uh, since a long time, I think. So people over many years have told me to try this and for some reason I always ignored them. This time I did not ignore Chris' advice to try it, so thanks Chris. <laughs> I, I don't know why I listened this time, but uh, I, I'm glad I did, because this is a really, really cool tool. So, um, let's see what it can do. The great thing about this tool is that, on the one hand, it has a surface that is really large enough to work on costume pieces. You know, it is not too small, it is also not so large that you can't get it uh, into crevices and nooks and crannies though I can you know I can really choose where I put some distressing but if I want to distress a large surface then hey there we go goes pretty fast right so I've already done some distressing on this part and also here uh, another thing I love about this uh, except its uh, perfect size to be both small and big enough uh, is how gradually I can apply distressing with this. So here is a completely fresh piece of fabric. No scratches, no nothing. And I'm just gonna rough it up just a bit. So here we go, one stroke, two stroke. And we already have some basic roughness. That's great, but check this out. Four, five, five strokes. It's already a lot of roughness. Let's do 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So in 10 strokes, we went from new to completely obliterated with a very, very fine degree of control. I can go over this piece and think like, hmm, it's all right, this looks good. I want the hole here. There we go, and all of this just gets a tiny bit. So one stroke and maybe another one against the grain here for a couple of small strokes. Note that I'm working on uh, a wooden surface not to destroy the tool too fast. I will get to that point in a sec. But basically, um, you can see what kind of a fine control this offers. So I can go from a bit of... Um, used look to completely destroyed in a couple of seconds with this, dosing it uh, in very, very uh, controlled increments. So this is just great. Now, one problem that I see with this tool is, uh, one possible problem, sorry. It hasn't happened to me yet, but seeing how I put it through really a lot of abuse um, and how it is built, there might be a problem down the line with some of those teeth starting to fall out. So let me let me zoom in on this. And uh, by the way, this is how I clean it because it's it's all covered in those tiny hooks, right? So I'll just get my vacuum tube and just do this because it's originally not designed for fabric, it's designed for leather. So uh, when I work on fabric, a lot of lint gathers up here and it's not a problem at first, but at some point it just clogs the whole thing up and that is not good. So uh, then I will just do a vacuum clean like this. Sorry. Um, the thing is, uh, when doing vacuum cleaning, I necessarily go in the direction of those tiny hooks, not against them. Because going against them is just gonna damage this, it's, well, not that I care about this, but it's it's still gonna dig those teeth in, and it's also might just tear out the teeth. So the only thing possible is going 
you know, in the direction of the teeth to clean them with a vacuum cleaner. Um, and yeah, this is how it's built. You can see it right here. It's a wooden base. And if the camera would be kindly focused, there we go. Uh, you can see there is a base of flexible material here. I'm going to really carefully nudge one of those teeth now from the safer side uh, so you can see it flexes which is great because that means once they dig in it is it has a little bit of give it still will tear but it has a tiny bit of give so that uh, you know the motion can go on instead of you just being you know deadlocked there and not being able to move the thing at all um, the possible problem with this is as I, I think I said but I'll repeat it again through a lot of use and abuse, I think it might be possible then that when the tool starts getting older, some of those teeth will start breaking out and being lodged in the costume itself, which is obviously problematic because that's going to be one scratchy costume. And let me tell you, those tiny hooks, they're extremely sharp, extremely vicious, extremely hard. It's just like, ouch, just even looking at them makes you feel uncomfortable <laughs> so i guess this is why this tool works so well so um here is also a piece of leather i worked over with this tool on one side but uh not on the other we can do the other now and as you see here i also did like a fade from a lot of distress on the edge to a little less here so let's do the other side of this leather piece So as you can see, it immediately starts showing effect. Going a bit higher up in the material. Uh, how I will go a lot of times about this is I will do a couple of passes just on the edge, a couple of passes like a centimeter or two in, and then more passes over the entire length of the whole thing. So basically the closer to the edge, the more uh, distressing uh, passes it will have gotten from me. So yeah, looks great. So, um, as I've mentioned, I'm working on a surface which is less hard than the steel in this tool because I don't want to destroy uh, my tool immediately. Uh, that said, when it starts getting older and I'm noticing it becomes a bit wibbly-wobbly here and there, I'm just gonna check it out and get a new one. Uh, this was like seven euros or something which sounds maybe a lot at first for a piece of wood with a couple of steel hooks on it, but it's really not. This is a huge time saver. And I uh, have already done a couple of costumes with this and it still holds. It, it's not like it's just disintegrating itself immediately. I'm just saying uh, once it does, it's not like a big expensive tool or anything like that, that you like need to keep maintained for years, you can just check it out, get a new one. So this is cool. Uh, now, I uh, still use this, however, though, because one thing this cannot do, and let me show that to you, is if I'm going to be trying to, to do any sort of a cut, so let me get a belt. So if we have a piece of belt here, and I just want to have it cut in a rough way, Doing it with this, well, let me actually put it on the, on the wood here. Doing it like this, with the saw, is a ton easier, obviously. There we go. Then doing it with this. Doing it with this would be, I don't want to say impossible. A lot of things are possible if you really put your mind to them. But it would be like pounding nails with a screwdriver. So this is not the tool for this kind of stuff. Uh, and also if we want to do something like this, let's say we have a uh, fold of fabric here and we want to have like a very, very precise rip at an exact spot that goes from no rip, like right here, to totally ripped in the next couple of millimeters. That's where this tool is, of course, a lot better. So, all in all, using these two in combination, the, this one mostly, is my new setup. 
I love this. Uh, again, I am uh, really glad that Chris gave me this advice and that I listened this time. Um, this is a nice tool. I love it. Um, I will see you in the next episode. And until then, have fun crafting and hail the snail.